Mike Tyson dominated the boxing ring throughout his career and even claimed the title of the youngest heavyweight champ in history when he was only 20 years old. Despite collecting multiple title belts and decimating his opponents, his personal relationships have been full of drama. Here's the sad truth about his love life. Born on June 30, 1966 in Brooklyn, New York, his birth certificate listed his father's name as Purcell Tyson, a man Mike never met. According to BBC, Mike was raised to believe a man named Jimmy Curly Kirkpatrick was his father, although Curly wasn't around much either. Life was tough for the family, so Mike became a street kid and was locked up 38 times by the time he was 13. He also had a strained relationship with his mom, Lorna Tyson, which Mike believed deeply impacted his future relationships. He said he never saw his mom happy or proud of him. He also added he never got the chance to talk to her or know anything about her. At the age of 16, his mom passed away. Luckily, a trainer named Cus Diamato, who Mike met in the try-on school for boys, stepped in to become his guardian and father figure up until he passed away in November 1985. As his star began to rise, Mike became a hot commodity with the ladies. In her memoir entitled, The Face That Changed It All, supermodel Beverly Johnson wrote she had a satisfying relationship with Mike in 1986, when he was 20 and she was 14 years older. The night before he was scheduled to fight for the heavyweight championship, Beverly told him she would give him a reward if he won. Mike defeated Trevor Burbick and popped up on Beverly's doorstep 19 hours later. She said the night was passionate and they dated for a few months before ultimately deciding to just be friends. Mike loved the supermodels, so it was no surprise he and Naomi Campbell hit it off in 1986 after meeting at a Russell Simmons party. Rory Holloway, Mike's then manager, wrote in his book entitled Taming the Beast, The Untold Story of Mike Tyson. He held Mike and Naomi's drinks as they went into the bathroom and engaged in some adult activities. They were a couple for a bit, but Mike had a wandering eye and Miss Naomi was having none of that. Mike moved on with actress Robin Givens in 1987. According to the Daily Mail, Robin showed up at their first date with her mom and her publicist. In his memoir, Mike admitted he had low self-esteem and wrote, maybe Robin was just what the doctor ordered. After Robin revealed she was pregnant with Mike's child, they got married without a prenup on February 7, 1988, after 11 months of dating. However, things deteriorated quickly. Mike wrote in his memoir that when he was at the funeral of a close friend, he received a call from his accountant that Robin and her mother were in his office demanding $5 million so they could purchase a New Jersey mansion. Although his accountant warned him not to, Mike agreed to give Robin and her mom the money, in addition to another $10 million shortly after to put into their separate bank account. In June, Mike noticed Robin, who should have been close to seven months pregnant, hadn't gained a pound. That's when she let him know she had lost the baby. Throughout their short marriage, the two were tabloid favorites with accusations of Mike putting his hands on her, people accusing Robin of being a gold digger and rumors that she was taking advantage of Mike, his lack of education and how naive he was. In an effort to fan the flames, they sat down for an interview with Barbara Walters in September 1988. Barbara asked about allegations that Mike had put his hands on Robin and chased her and her mother around a Russian hotel. That's when Robin opened up about Mike's volatile temper. He's got a side to him that's scary. Michael is intimidating, to say the least. She admitted he would get out of control and would scream and throw things. Robin said she had become afraid and said Mike was manic depressive. Their relationship drama continued, including Mike's allegation of catching Robin with Brad Pitt. Robin filed for divorce shortly after Barbara Walters' interview aired, and it was finalized on February 14, 1989. According to AP News, Mike kept their New Jersey mansion and Robin was awarded some jewelry, several automobiles, and an undisclosed amount of cash. Mike was ready to move on. While attending a party at Eddie Murphy's home in 1990, an aspiring pediatrician and mom of one named Monica Turner caught his eye. According to the Washington Post, they kept in touch, but Mike also had someone else on his radar, a model named Kimberly Scarborough. 
She became pregnant, and according to the New York Daily News, Mike initially asked her to terminate the pregnancy. Kimberly agreed and went to the clinic, but then she had a change of heart. Mike wasn't happy with her decision. His camp would also call her every day, offering her a million dollars in exchange for Mike not signing the birth certificate and for Kimberly to keep quiet about the baby, but she refused. In 1991, she gave birth to a little girl. The baby looked so much like Mike, Kimberly decided to name her Michael Mickey Lorna Tyson in honor of Mike and his late mother. After conducting a DNA test, it was determined that Mike was the father. He was finally warming up to being a dad and spoiled his baby girl with all sorts of gifts, but his life got flipped upside down. In July 1991, he was a guest at the Indiana Black Expo when he met an 18-year-old beauty pageant contestant. According to the Washington Post, the woman went to Mike's hotel room, and 24 hours later, she went to the authorities and accused him of taking advantage of her. Mike claimed everything was consensual, but in March 1992, he was convicted and sentenced to 10 years behind bars. According to the New York Times, the judge suspended the last four years of his sentence, which meant Mike was set to spend no more than six years behind bars. While locked up, he converted to Islam and was visited by his old flame, Monica Turner, as well as his baby mama, Kimberly, and their daughter. Mike wrote in his memoir he also received many female visitors who he was intimate with. He even claimed he carried on an affair with his female counselor. He was released in March 1995 after serving just three years. Out on parole, Mike was ready to reclaim his throne in the boxing world. He also had his first encounter with an 18-year-old named Lakia Kiki Spicer. According to the New York Post, Mike's then-promoter Don King told him stay away from her. Don't go talking to that girl. Although Kiki said their connection was like a moth to a flame, they ended up going their separate ways and Mike continued dating Monica. Monica gave birth to their daughter Raina in February 1996. The couple got married in April 1997 in a low-key Muslim ceremony, and they welcomed their son Amir in August 1997. The family, which included Monica's eldest daughter from a previous relationship, settled down in a home in Maryland, and Mike's personal issues raged on. In 1998, he got physical with two motorists, and in 1999, he spent nine months behind bars. By the time he was released, there were reports he and Monica were estranged, Mike was spending more time at his Las Vegas home and a lot more time with Kiki Spicer. According to the New York Post, Mike and Kiki began casually dating around 2001, but Mike wouldn't commit. He said, at that particular time, I was an idiot and I believed that it was normal protocol that everyone should want to be with me. He would go to the club with other women, but would always leave with Kiki. Kiki said, He's the only person I was ever able to fall back in love with several times. They continued to date on and off over the next few years. In January 2002, Monica finally filed for divorce. According to the Washington Post, she cited adultery as the cause, and Mike counterfiled, saying they were incompatible. It probably didn't help that Mike had a son, Miguel, with a woman named Soul sometime in the spring of 2002. His and Monica's divorce was finalized in January 2003, according to the Washington Post. He agreed to pay her $6.5 million, and she was given custody of their children and a Connecticut mansion. Mike continued dating Soul, and she gave birth to their daughter, Exodus, in March 2005. The years passed, and Mike was still drawn to Kiki. In 2008, according to the New York Post, Kiki was sentenced to serve time for making fraudulent city contracts through her family's company. About six weeks before she was due to be locked up, she found out she was pregnant by Mike. She ended up serving six months and gave birth to their daughter Milan shortly after her release. Kiki wanted to live with Mike, but his probation wouldn't allow it since they both had criminal records. They continued living apart and kept dating, and Mike was seeing other people too. He linked up with Big Brother reality star Aislinn Horgan Wallace, and in 2009, it was reported Mike popped the question via email. Aislinn told her friends she was torn over the proposal and she only saw him as a friend. 
Tragedy struck in May 2009 when Mike's four-year-old daughter Exodus lost her life in a treadmill accident. He was reportedly devastated over the loss, and two weeks later, he made a decision that would change his life forever. He and Kiki got married at the Las Vegas Hilton with no guests present. According to the New York Post, Mike said he wanted to commit to a woman who had been there for him through all the hard times. He said, I'm very happy me and my wife got together because I don't know how I would have survived out there. In January 2011, Kiki gave birth to Mike's seventh child, Morocco. These days, Mike appears to be happy, healthy, and loving his wife and family. In January 2020, while chatting on T.I.'s podcast, he said he looks at women a lot differently now that he's older. He sees women as more than just a source of pleasure. He also admitted he has officially gone two years without cheating on his wife, and he was proud of himself. So why did he decide to tie the knot for the third time after his disastrous marriages? Mike told T.I. that without a wife in his life, he might hurt himself. He said, I need somebody to listen to. I'm a soldier. I can't think on my own. I need somebody to do it. We wish Mike and his family the best of luck. Let us know your thoughts on his messy dating history. And thanks for watching Real Reality Gossip.